Good afternoon. My name is Gergely Shiposh, working for EGI.eu through the Hungarian MGI. And today I will give you a brief introduction to the European grid infrastructure, to the recently started EGI Engage project, as well as its members, the competence centers. And I will brief you on the scope of the webinar that we are having today on authentication and authorization infrastructures. EGI, the European Grid Infrastructure Collaboration, was established in 2010 after a series of projects funded by national funding agencies as well as by the European Commission. The term refers to a European-wide collaboration that has also has uh, collaborators and partners outside of Europe, but the core of the collaboration are the so-called national grid initiatives, currently 32 countries, that has that have established the EGI.eu Institute in Amsterdam in 2010 in order to facilitate the provisioning of a distributed infrastructure service for the European research area. This infrastructure service federates IT solutions, hardware, software, and related human support solutions from the member states into a coherent infrastructure that includes computers, data resources, applications that are offered through different cloud, cluster, grid, and other types of platforms for research collaborations uh, at different scale. The European grid infrastructure is one of the e-infrastructure solutions that exist in Europe, and therefore it's a key enabler of the different large-scale research facilities and research collaborations that are uh, coming into existence in Europe. The sustainability of this collaboration is financed through the sustainable operation of these member states, the national grid initiatives, plus additional funding is coming in through different projects that drive the innovation forward. One of the most important projects that is driving the next two and a half years of EGI is the EGI Engage project. Horizon 2020 project that has started on the 1st of March this year. But other projects are also starting this year, such as the ARC project that Petter, the next speaker, will talk about, as well as Indico and other initiatives that are outside of the scope of today's webinar. What EGI really delivers is solutions that enable domain-specific infrastructures for different research domains. We are enabling the Large Hadron Collider experiment by providing a distributed computing facility to CERN and its partner uh, institutes. We are supporting structural bio biology by providing different software and hardware solutions to the VNMR project. We are doing similar activities for agronomical sciences through the Alge Infra Initiative, and we are supporting many other discipline or domain-specific infrastructure uh, provisioning to different projects. What the EGI members provide are, on one hand, distributed capacity that is offered by the different resource centers that are highlighted with orange on this picture. These centers are mostly in Europe, but through the partner agreements we have outside of Europe, we can tap into capacity allocations that are in North America, South America, Africa, and the Asia Pacific and Australia regions. On the other hand, we provide different software solutions that can be rolled onto these hardware elements, grid and cloud computing platforms, or higher level services such as virtual research environments that encapsulate all this capacity and presents them in a usable uh, fashion for domain science scientists. Currently, the infrastructure offering uh, that the EGI members have uh, includes roughly 350 resource centers from 40 countries, altogether offering something like 400 thousand logical CPU cores with a waste amount of disk and tape-based storage systems for online simulations or for archival purposes with measured reliability and availability performances 
and this infrastructure is currently used by roughly 200 user projects each owning its own resource allocation from this infrastructure these resource allocations are with the EGI term per terminology are called virtual organizations each offering a subset of the services from this huge infrastructure for a single scientific purpose. The EGI collaboration helps these projects set up service level agreements and operation level agreements between the science scientists and the IT providers and these offerings and agreements can help basically these domain specific infrastructures to answer a set of basic questions such as which would be the compute and storage centers and services that can support my scientific discipline how to federate these these compute capabilities and storage capabilities from my partner resource site how to build a distributed application or distributed applications that can scale across these different institutes how to roll out new versions of the software and how to provide software maintenance in such a distributed and federated environment how to perform uh, compute and data intensive simulations using these distributed software services how to control access to the various stakeholders from my collaboration to the shared assets how to monitor their usage and how to account for the usage at the end of the day. So these kind of questions that the EGI solutions and the experts in the EGI network can help scientific collaboration answer. And as I said, we are driving forward this collaboration through different innovation projects. The new projects that are in Horizon 2020 are all based on a common vision that we established in 2014 through the members of the EGI collaboration and members of the broader European uh, research area and this vision is called the Open Science Commons vision that suggests a joint activity by different members of the e-infrastructure and research infrastructure landscape as well as the funding agencies to reach a future where researchers from all disciplines have easy integrated and open access to the advanced digital services, scientific instruments, data, knowledge and expertise that they need to collaborate to achieve excellence in science, research and innovation. This vision requires further work, not only from EGI, but also from other key projects and members of the European research area. From the EGI perspective, we recently established and launched a new Horizon 2020 project called EGI Engage that unites infrastructure services and research infrastructure services into a portfolio of activities that facilitate the uptake of the data commons, the infrastructure commons and the knowledge commons pillars that are required to reach this open science commons. This EGI Engage project launched on the 1st of March 2015, just very recently, with 43 partners all across Europe, plus the Asia Pacific, with a new uh, 8 million euro EC contribution. The EGI Engage project has three goals, three objectives. The first is to ensure a continued coordination of the EGI community that requires further strategy and policy development requires the continued support for the users and for the operational infrastructure. The second objective is to evolve the existing technical solutions and related business models and access policies that are spanning and focusing on three technical solutions. One is the high throughput computing solution, the second is a federated cloud and the third is operations. And the third objective is to promote the adoption of these existing solutions and to extend these uh, services through user-driven code development. And this code development is happening in eight competence centers, which itself a network of institutes from largely from scientific background that customize the existing EGI solutions to these different scientific disciplines 
such as life sciences, such as brain imaging or neuroimaging, such as space science or earth science. And through the user-driven co-development, feeds back into the EGI uh, collaboration and facilitate the reuse of solutions across different disciplines. And what we are trying to achieve today is to facilitate the interaction between members of these competence centers and members of the broader EGI community who are responsible for the second and, and the first and second objectives of EGI. So what we are hoping to get out from the webinar is on one hand directly training the competence centers about the current capabilities of certain EGI services and at the same time help the joint road mapping between the different competence centers and between the technical activities that are happening in EGI outside of competence centers. And the third, we would like to establish direct interactions between different technological experts today in the security or authentication and authorization and the members of the competence centers. So we hope that today is the start of a dialogue that will continue with additional training uh, events and other forms of collaborations until we reach and uh, realize the Open Science Commons vision. Let me talk a bit about those three technical solutions that currently exist in EGI. These have been mentioned on the previous slide and you can see this with red on this slide. The first solution is the high throughput data analysis and this is one of the first solutions that EGI had that was established roughly 10 years ago largely driven by the needs of the Large Hadron Collider experiment and the need for setting up a platform across largely distributed infrastructure infrastructures that are capable of accepting data from the Large Hadron Collider in Geneva, distribute the data across the partner sites, and then facilitate the, uh, the, simula the performance, performing of simulations against that data at the different partner institute by a large number of distributed uh, community members. This high throughput data analysis solution resulted in a set of grid services that can be used for batch-oriented computing, for job submission, job management, brokering of compute-intensive tasks, as well as for the storage of mostly file-based data uh, and distributing of that file-based data across a large number of sites. The second solution that relates to this is the federated operations. The federated operations is required for the system administrator uh, community in order to enable a coordinated sharing of resources on a large scale and to ensure the high quality of services across the different partner sites uh, for serving the scientific experiments. And the third solution that is the most recent solution, the Federated Cloud, is a new platform that has been opened at a production level in last May and that offers a cloud-based storage and compute facility at a European scale for scientific collaborations. And to put the webinar of today into context, I try to show this on this slide with a diagram that shows that authentication and authorization, the, the solutions that will be covered today are basically covering aspects of all the three solutions. Security and security mechanisms are needed in both the distributed grid-oriented computing, the federated cloud-based computing and storage, and also from the system administrator point of view to control access to resources. So this will be the topic for today. Tomorrow we will have at the same time another webinar which will focus on the federated cloud uh, solution or more broadly on cloud services 
that are available in EGI. And the third webinar will cut into both the high throughput data analysis solution and also in the federated cloud solution and present the data management solutions from these two uh, solution offerings. So this data management webinar will be on Thursday at the same time. So just to show you the schedule of the webinars, today Petter will talk about the authentication and authorization infrastructure. Tomorrow the cloud services will be introduced by Diego Scardacci and on Thursday the data management services from the grid and from the cloud will be introduced by Vincenzo and Anno. Each of these webinars will be roughly 45 to 60 minutes presentation and then time will be allocated for discussion. During the discussion session I would like to find answers from the audience to the questions I put onto this slide. One is how relevant do you think the presented solutions are relevant for, for your competence center or for your community? Second question is how do you think these presented solutions should evolve in the future in order to better satisfy your competence center or community? How can you contribute into the evolution? And the third question I have on this slide is which topic or tool that you have heard about today would you like to learn more about? What future events or sort of training should we organize for you? What would be the preferred format? Webinars or face-to-face -face trainings or online guidances? So meanwhile you listen to Petter's presentation, I would like to ask you to think about answers to these questions because after the webinar in the discussion part we will come back to these. Thank you and then I would like to invite Petter to start the AI presentation.